ان الحمد لله ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلله فلا هادي له ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد أن سيدنا ومولانا محمد عبده ورسوله أما بعد فقد قال الله تبارك وتعالى في القرآن المجيد والفرقان الحميد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها النبي لم تحرم ما أحل الله لك تبتغي مرضات أزواجك والله غفور رحيم وقال تعالى وعاشروهن بالمعروف فإن كرهتموهن فعسى أن تكره شيئا ويجعل الله فيه خيرا كثيرا وقال النبي صلى الله تعالى عليه وسلم خيركم خيركم لأهله وأنا خيركم لأهلي أو كما قال عليه الصلاة والسلام صدق الله مولانا العظيم وصدق رسوله النبي الكريم ونحن على ذلك من الشاهدين والشاكرين والحمد لله رب العالمين Honorable Ulama Ikram, respected brothers and elders, in the previous Jum'ah we spoke about the hadith of Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wherein he exhorts us to display kindness to the general Muslim Ummah. Today I want to become more specific and more focused and speak about this very element of kindness in the life of Nabi alayhi salatu wa to his noble consorts and his honorable spouses. Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in many a hadith has stressed, stressed upon kindness towards your spouses. In fact, in one riwayat, Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, that husband who will bear the ill manners of his wife patiently, that husband who will endure patiently the ill manners of his wife, Allah will grant him the same reward that he gave to Sayyidina Ayyub alayhi salam when afflicted with sickness. And that wife who will patiently bear and endure the ill manners of her husband, Allah Ta'ala will reward that woman with the same reward that he gave to Sayyidina Asiya alayhi salam, the righteous wife of the notorious bloodshedder and evil man Fir'aun. <laughs> Nabi Karim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in many a hadith, khayrukum khayrukum li ahlihi, O my sahaba, the best among you is he who is the best to his wife. This is a general statement the Nabi of Allah has made. And then he has coupled the statement with a claim by saying, وَأَنَا خَيْرُكُمْ لِأَهْلِي And there can be no one that is more kind to his wife than I. So one is the general statement that the Nabi of Allah has made, and one is he has coupled it with a claim. Of course he has then substantiated this claim in the manner he has conducted himself. Like, you know, on a light note, they say marriage. Marriage is an institution where a man loses his bachelor's degree and a woman gets her master's. They say this child asked his father, Oh my father, how much does it cost to get married? So the father said, My son, I don't know, I'm still paying. <laughs> marriage certificate, they say, is another name for work permit. They say this woman was making dua. She says, Oh my Lord, grant me wisdom that I understand my husband. Love that I can forgive him. And patience for his moods. Because Lord, if I ask you for strength, I will stone him to death. Anyway, brothers, we have to see the akhlaq of Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. One person came to Sayyidina Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu complaining that my wife is very harsh to me. Let's look at how kind, what were the advices of Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, how tolerant he was. We must understand no two humans can make a perfect match. The attitude of zero defect. This is not possible, no practical. There will always be some clashes, total compatibility, it's not possible and it's not practical. There will always be situations where you will have to compromise. But if we study the life of Nabi Karim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and that of Sahaba, look at Sayyidatina Sauda radiallahu anha, subhanallah, what a, what a brilliant woman. For some reason or the other, the Nabi of Allah decides to divorce her. She comes to Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and she says, Oh Nabi of Allah, before you finally divorce me, may I ask you a question? Nabi alayhi salam says, by all means, go ahead. She says, O oh, Nabi of Allah, are you upset with me over any matter? Nabi alayhi salam declines and he says, no, I'm not upset with you. O oh, Nabi of Allah, is it, it become difficult for you to stay with me? Nabi Karim sallallahu alayhi salam says, no. Then she says, O oh, Nabi of Allah, I ask you and I implore you, please do not divorce me because I want to remain in your nikah. However, I have aged and I have passed the time where I have a physical need for a man. I forfeit my rights 
and I see you have a greater inclination towards your wife Aisha radiallahu anha. I sacrifice my night for that wife of yours. So the day it's my chance, you can go and visit your wife Aisha. But I want to remain in this nikah, so I can be resurrected on the day of Qiyamah as the wife of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Subhanallah, what was the, the foresight of this woman? Free from jealousy, free from uneasiness, free from rivalry. She forfeited her right and she secured the partnership of master of the both, of the master of both the world, Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Once Nabi Karim sallallahu alaihi wasallam was traveling with Aisha radiallahu anha. Aisha radiallahu anha herself mentions the riwayat comes in Bukhari. Hatta idha kunna bil bayda, we came to a place called bayda. In qata iqdun li, my pendant fell off and got missing. Now, Every woman is passionate about her jewelry. Now look at how accommodating, how tolerant, how kind the Nabi of Allah was. Nabi Karim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, one day Aisha radiallahu anha took interest in seeing some play. Some children, some Ethiopian children were playing uh, in the courtyard of Masjid and Nabawi. But we must bear in mind, this was innocent play. This had no evil element towards it. And Aisha radiallahu anha says, you know, it intrigued me and it interested me. So I said, this is my chance, let me sit and watch. And I put my head on the shoulder of Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam, and I'm burdening him with my weight and I'm looking. Naturally the Nabi of Allah has no inclination, but he patiently is waiting. Aisha radiallahu anha then says, you can well imagine a young girl when she's attracted by a play, how long will she look at that play? That is how long I burdened the Nabi of Allah, but he did not move respecting me and honoring my sentiments. So there has to be time for, from one spouse to another. Anyway, we came out. And when we halted at this particular place, my pendant got missing. Nabi alayhi salam realized that my wife is passionate, that is me. فَأَقَامَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَمْ عَلَىٰ إِلْتِمَاسِهِ I started looking, and because of me, the Nabi of Allah started looking. So I delayed the Nabi of Allah, and the Nabi of Allah's delay delayed the entire caravan. Naturally, the Sahaba became uneasy here. So much time is going in looking for one pendant. They couldn't tell the Nabi of Allah anything. So they came to Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu. And he told Abu Bakr, look at your daughter, I mean, what she's doing, she's looking for one pendant, it's causing chaos here, why don't you find it and we can move? But the Nabi of Allah is patient, he's understanding the sentiments of this woman, he's kind, he's not getting upset, he's bearing it patiently, tolerance. Finally, the Nabi of Allah looked for it, Aisha radiallahu anha looked for it, they couldn't find it. The riwayat says of Bukhari, Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam then put his Mubarak head in the lap of Aisha radiallahu anha and he fell off to sleep. Now he fell off to sleep, the time of namaz set in, وَلَيْسُ عَلَى مَاءٍ وَلَيْسَ مَعَهُمْ مَا Water is not available and nobody has wuzu. So they came and they started telling Abu Bakr, look at your daughter, I mean, for one pendant, how long are we going to sit and wait? So Abu Bakr radiallahu then comes to Aisha radiallahu anha, and he comes in a riwayat, he then presses her with a finger and he admonishes her, وَقَالَ مَا شَاءَ اللَّهُ أَنْ يَقُولِ He told her, mouthful, what's wrong with you, why did you do this? And Aisha radiallahu anha said, فَلَا يَمْنَعُنِي مِنَ التَّحَرُّك I couldn't move my leg because Nabi alayhi head was in my lap. So I'm patiently listening, my father is showering me and telling me a mouthful and Sahaba are becoming uneasy. The Nabi of Allah then gets up, Sahaba are worried that there's no wuzu, there's no water available. Allah sends Jibreel to rescue them and the entire ummah. In moments of desperation, Allah reveals the verses of Tayammu. Sayyidina Usaid ibn Hudayr then comes to Abu Bakr and he says, Ma hiya bi awwali barakatikum ya Abi Bakrin. Oh Abu Bakr, whenever you and your family got into some predicament and dilemma, Allah Ta'ala on a disguise note made that very challenge a source of benefit. Hear your desperation open up the concession of tayammum for the ummah till the day of qiyamah. So you will find when it came to these things the Nabi of Allah was very kind. As I was mentioning the incident of Sayyidina Umar radiallahu anhu, one person had a problem, his wife used to back answer him very often. So he came to Sayyidina Umar radiallahu anhu and he thought that he will complain to Sayyidina Umar that this is the problem myself and my wife, we tend to argue a lot. But as he came to the house of Sayyidina Umar radiallahu anhu, he overheard his wife back answering Umar. In other words, the wife of Umar back answering Umar radiallahu anhu. So this person uh, heard this and he felt that this is the same problem that I have. Uh, it must not be that when I present in this man's house and I tell him my problem, he perhaps thinks I'm referring to his own problem. So quietly he withdrew and he went away. Sayyidina Umar radiallahu anhu heard some footsteps and then he seen people, you know, nobody came. So he opened the door and he seen a man in the distance, he shouted out, he said, come home brother, what's the problem? He says, uh, I have a problem, but in all due respect, I, I think, you, you know, you have a similar problem. So I felt that it's not advisable for me to approach because my wife is a bit short-tempered and she loses her tongue and she becomes a bit aggressive. So Sayyidina Umar radiallahu said, no, come home. I can discuss with you and, and we can, uh, I'll explain to you something. Inni atajawazu anha li laha alayya. My wife is ill-tempered and short-tempered, but I overlook the trivial wrong of my wife for the many favors of her upon me.
And perhaps it would be opportune to couple this with the hadith of Muslim Sharif, where the Nabi of Allah says, لا يفركم مؤمنا مؤمن مؤمنة No believer should discard his wife totally. If he dislikes one wrong of hers, definitely there are many other good qualities that attract you. If this, she, she, she falters in something, she has a flaw of one thing, but there are many other things that are good. In the final hadith of Nabi alayhi salam in his Hajjatul Wada, what was his last message? Oh people, fear Allah regarding the treatment of your wives. Verily you have taken them into your possession through the permission of Allah. It is through the procedure of nikah that you have taken this woman into your care. So fear Allah with regards to how you deal with your wives. Nevertheless, Sayyidina Umar said, I overlook, my wife does back answer because number one, Sitrum baini wa bayna nar fayaskunu biha qalbi anil haram. My wife is the veil between me and Jahannam. It is because of this wife of mine by whom I enjoy matrimonial relation that my heart and my mind remains clean and clear from filthy thoughts of zina and immorality. When I am so duty bound to her that it is only her that keeps my heart and my mind clean, my need is satisfied. I think I am morally obligated that I overlook this trivial wrong because my, my entry into Jannah is pending on this. Otherwise me by my nature I am so evil. Perhaps any woman that will pass my gaze, I know how vulnerable I am. I will perhaps stretch an evil hand towards her. So my wife satisfies my need. Hence because of that I overlook it. Number two, tabakhatun, she cooks my food. Khabazatun, she bakes my meal, my, my, you know, bread and whatever else have you. And she says to my children, when this man heard this, he was melted into tears. And he said, oh Omar, if that is your attitude, all the more I should also have the same attitude and respect towards my wife. So this is one aspect of kindness. But brothers, today I want to speak about another aspect. The hadith that I quoted, the Nabi of Allah says, Yaglibna Kariman. Yaglibna Kariman. It is the nature of woman that they dominate a soft-natured man. This is an analysis that the Nabi of Allah is making. Wa Yaglibuhunna Naimun. And a stern and a harsh and a rigid man would dominate over them. Fa'uhibbu an akuna kariman maglooba. I would prefer to be soft and passive and dominated by my spouse, then to be stern, harsh, and rigid, and dominate over them. This is the words of Nabi Karim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But today we have to study what is, what is the kindness. The Nabi of Allah said, none has been more kind to his wife than I. What is the kindness that the world has offered to their wives? That is, wallah, not kindness in the eyes of Allah and his Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Now when I was traveling, I was in London, and I had about an eight hour stopover, so while having a meal there, you know, they, at Heathrow Airport, they have uh, those designated smoking areas. While sitting and eating, having a meal there, as I was watching, this is the liberation the Western world has offered to the woman. This is the freedom they've offered. Well, I said that for about two hours, 95% of the people that came to smoke, they were women. This is now their freedom, this is their choice, this is their liberation. This is now how they are progressive, that they can travel themselves, they can smoke, and that makes them on par with the, with, with the advancement of the modern world. Generally, you would base kindness to your spouse on the car you provide for her, on the house in which she lives, the food she eats, and the clothes she dresses. That is taken to be a kind spouse to his wife, a kind husband. Let's analyze those factors in the life of Nabi alayhi salam, and then you will realize perhaps, if you have to view the Nabi of Allah with a western eye of kindness, you, you will perhaps come to the conclusion that no man has ill-treated his wife more than Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. But it is the absence of this nature of kindness that is the result of our marriages breaking up. When the marriage is dissolved, then people wonder, but, but what, what were they short of? What were they short of? I mean, she had a car of her own, she had so much money, they were moving for international vacations. But what was wrong in this life? Wallah, they were lacking spirituality. Just as it is vital for every husband and wife to take out time for some recreation, it is vital and it is our need that we take out time for last, for our pleasure. There has to be time where we create an atmosphere of spirituality. With a house, husband and wife have to sit and read Quran and paint that picture of the Quran. Inna al muslimina wal muslimati wal mu'minina wal mu'minati wal qanitina wal qanitati wal sadiqina wal sadiqat the believing male, the believing female, the men that prostrate, the women that prostrate, the men that cry, the women that cry, the men that make dua, the women that make dua. Time has to be taken out for spirituality between partners. If we can give them everything of this world, but they are devoid of spirituality, which has been defined as kindness in this hadith of Nabi alayhi salam, that marriage will never prosper. Look at the house that the Nabi of Allah provided for Aisha radiallahu anha. The riwayat suggests 
that when Aisha Rabi Allah says, when the Nabi of Allah used to make sajda, Gham Azani, he used to press me with his Mubarak hand, Qabad to Rijlaya, I used to withdraw my legs. When he used to stand up, I used to then stretch my legs. Someone asked her what was the need for this. She said the room was so small, it could not accommodate me sleeping and the Nabi of Allah prostrating. This was the house he gave his wife. Yet he said there has been no one more kind to his wife than I. In fact, if you look at the bedding, the bedding was so simple. One day one Ansari woman came home and she looked at the bedding of Nabi alayhi salam and she was moved to tears. She said, Aisha, is this on with the bedding on which my Nabi sleeps? She went home, she brought her own bedding and then she gave it and she said, when the Nabi of Allah comes home, tell him one female follower of his has made this humble contribution if he can kindly accept it and sleep on it. When the Nabi of Allah returned and he found that the bedding is new and it's soft and it's comfortable, he said, Aisha, where is this from? Ruddihi ya Aisha. فَوَاللَّهِ لَإِنْ شِئْتُ لَأَجْرَ اللَّهُ مَعِي جِبَالَ الذَّهَبِ وَالْفِضَّةِ I shall take this out of my life. You know, Tihama, which is a mountainous region, you know, Arabia was divided into four. Najd, Sahra, Hijaz, and Tihama. Tihama was a mountainous region. If I so wanted all the mountains of Tihama, my Allah would have converted into gold and silver. But I myself decline, I shall take this out. Aisha رضي الله then politely returns it. So this was the house provided. Then let's look at the clothing. He tells Aisha رضي الله عنه إن أردت اللحوق بي فليكفيك من الدنيا كزاد الراكب أو عيسى if you want to join me in the abode that my Lord has prepared for me then live in this world like a traveler ولا تستخلقي طوبا and don't consider any garment old until you don't touch it several times أو عيسى don't consider any garment old one day Aisha رضي الله عنه put on a beautiful garment Abu Bakr رضي الله عنه came and he seen his daughter admiring himself. He said, مَا تَنْظُرِينَ يَا عَيْشَى فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ لَيْسَ بِنَاظِرٍ إِلَيْهِ Aisha, I don't know what you're admiring because Allah is not admiring you. Why, O oh my father, don't you know when any woman, any person dons a beautiful garment and becomes obsessed with that garment, becomes proud with that garment, مَقَتَهُ رَبُّهُ حَتَّى يُفَارِقَ تِلْكَ الزِّينَ Allah abandons that person, be it male or female, until he or she doesn't give up that pride. Aisha radiallahu anha took out that garment and gave it in charity there and there. Oh Aisha, if you wish to join me, then live in this world as a traveler. And don't consider a garment as old until you don't touch it. As far as the food, the riwayat of Bayhaqi, Al-aklu fi al-yawmi marrateini min al-israf, Wallahu ya yuhibbu al-musrifeen. One day Nabi alayhi salam found Aisha radiallahu anha having two meals in one day. Nabi alayhi salam says, Oh Aisha, have you made the object of your life eating? Don't you know eating twice a day is extravagant and Allah doesn't like those that are extravagant. Yet the Nabi of Allah says there's no one more kind to his wife than I. Wallah, if our lives will be devoid of the element of the kindness which has been defined by Allah in His Nabi, you can give your wife anything and everything. She will point to you with the rings you bought, with the bangles you bought and say you have done nothing for me. That is what the Nabi of Allah said in the Rewayat of Bukhari on the occasion of Eid he addressed his wife, the woman and he said give charity. He said why us O Nabi of Allah? Nabi Sallallahu said you are very ungrateful. What makes us ungrateful O Nabi of Allah? Law ahsanta ila ihdaunna tahara thumma ra'at fika shay'a If your husband is kind to you for a decade and then he does one thing unintentionally against your desire you negate all his kindness and you say I have never seen good in this marriage. Ma ra'aytu fika khayran qattu Brothers take another incident. Aisha radiallahu the most beloved, I showed you how tolerant she was with Nabi alayhi salam, how tolerant Nabi alayhi salam was with her in locating her pendant. This was material harm, the Nabi of Allah was flexible. But when he came to deen, this is not the time. That hadith where the Nabi of Allah says, I prefer to be dominated by my wife in what? In matters that are trivial. That all no merit in the eyes of Allah. But in matters of deen, you haven't seen a more stern husband, you haven't seen a more rigid husband than the Nabi of Allah. When he came to deen, Allahu Akbar make mention of one incident. Abu Ayyub Ansari radiallahu is at home. The slander against Aisha radiallahu anha is being circulated. Many times we at home, the wife comes, you heard this thing, you heard that. We entertain it, we promote it, and we start ghibat from our own homes. Abu Ayyub Ansari's wife comes home, and she says that people are making these accusations against Aisha. What is your opinion? Abu, Abu Ayyub Ansari declines, and he says it's a lie. Then she says, but what's your proof? He tells his wife, you are my wife, will you commit an act of, of, of immorality? She says, never. You being my wife, you will never do it. Aisha being the wife of Muhammad will she do it? Never. Immediately he told his wife, I don't ever want to hear such things like that. 
So when it came to Deen, and that is my focus, here we have to become inflexible and unfortunately, here we succumb to pressure, here we give in to pressure, that is why there is no happiness in that marriage. Aisha radiallahu as beloved as she was, one day she made a comment about Safiya radiallahu anha. Safiya, she said, Hasbukam in Safiya kada wa kada. Your wife Safiya, she, she is so short. What's so good about her? Nabi alayhi salam said, Lapad kulti kalima. Oh Aisha, you have uttered such a statement. It has the potential of contaminating the oceans of the entire world. Lanajasatil bahru. One day Aisha made a comment about Khadija. There was subtle rivalry. She said, you talk of your wife Khadija, isn't she gone and old? She was old and she passed away. Allah gave you me. I'm virgin. I was unmarried and I'm young. Am I not better than that one? Nabi Ali Sam said, no, no, Aisha, watch your word. Khadija was my first wife. She gave birth to my children. Jibreel told me that Allah has confirmed her abode in Jannah. One day Nabi Ali Salaam told, how disciplined are we when it comes to maintaining spirituality? It is our, just as we the guardian to our children, we are responsible of disseminating deen to our spouses. Nabi Ali Salaam told Zainab radiallahu anha, that give one of your camels to Safiya. Her camel was sick or whatever. So Nabi Salaam said, said, give it to Safiya. Now Safiya radiallahu anha is the daughter of Huyay ibn Akhtab, who was a Yahud. Hence, uh, Safiya radiallahu anha had a flavor of, uh, you know, Yahudiyat, Judaism in her, her father was a Yahud. So Zainab radiallahu anha, you know, made a comment and she says, all right, I'll give it to this Jew if you so say. Nabi Ali Islam got so angry, it comes in the riwayat, for more than two months the Nabi will let him speak to her. You and I will return home after Fajr Salah, when our wife did not get up and did not bow before Allah, we'll jump in that very bed, hug that woman, love her, cherish her. When she is at war with Allah, she hasn't stood up, she hasn't performed namaz, and we are showing her love. What kind of love is this? The Nabi of Allah on one statement did not speak to his wife. The riwayat of Bukhari, the wives of Nabi Ali Islam came, and brothers at the same time, at the same time, just not the husband to the wife. I had a complaint that came recently. May Allah give jazai khair to that woman. A sister that came here from our locality, and she came home and she came crying to my house. She says, Mawlana, Allah has given us everything of wealth. Wallah, I hope she is listening to me. And she asked me, convey my message. Time has passed. Uh, it's been few months ago that she came, she cried. She says, Allah has given us abundance of health and wealth. We're a united family, but my husband just doesn't want to perform salah. What measure can I institute? Am I not as his wife responsible to say, I'm asking you, make dua, teach me something that I can inspire. Brothers, there's a youngster in this gathering as you and I talk who came to me this very week. Moran, I have just got married. My wife is insisting I must take off my beard. But I told her I cannot compromise on the deen of Allah. In this very gathering as you and I speak, I advised him. I told him whatever it is, resist it. We cannot compromise to make muhabbat to, 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 to disobey Allah. And alhamdulillah for the pleasure of Allah, he has kept his beard. May Allah give him strength. May Allah give him courage. You will see that marriage will prosper. Why? Because he has taken Allah on his side. Oh my wife, I love you, I honor you, I respect you. But the commandments of Allah, I cannot compromise in it. Nevertheless, these people came. They surrounded the Nabi of Allah, his wife, the wife of Bukhari. And in Jalalain, it is written, one wife said, I want, Umm Salma radiallahu anha said, I want better curtains. Umm Habiba said, I think now there's so much prosperity, you owe me a better outfit. Another wife said, you owe me a better house. The Nabi of Allah was hurt by this so much. He left them and he went away for one month. He was so angry with his wives. Allah then revealed the verses. Ya ayyuhal nabi yukul li azwajika in kuntunna turidna al-hayat al-dunya wa zinataha fata'alayna umatti'kunna wa usarrihkunna sarahan jameela. O Nabi of Allah, summon your wives and then put the story before them. Tell them they have one of two choices. If they want the material world, we will give them double of what they want. But today their marriage with my nabi is severed. One of two choices, you want the world, we will double what you want. But today this, this relation with my Nabi terminates. Wa in kuntunna, and if you want akhirat, you can enjoy the Nabi. Nabi alayhi salam calls Aisha radiallahu anha, says, Oh Aisha, Allah has revealed the verse of option. And Allah told me I must address you. You have asked me for things of this world. Allah says if you want, He will give you more than what you want. But if, if as soon as you want more of this world, my relation with you terminates today. Don't hasten in the matter, consult with your parents and come back. Aisha radiallahu anha says, Afika ushawiru abawiyya ya Rasulullah. O Nabi of Allah, am I going to stoop so low to go and ask my parents, do I want you or the world? I swear by Allah, I want you and I don't want this world. And never again will you ever hear me asking you any material thing. Again, now look at the nature of a woman. She says, O Nabi of Allah, but don't mention my answer to your other wives. The Nabi of Allah was very conscious. 
In fact, brothers, I don't have time. Naturally, the, the, the wives were sensitive. One day, generally after Asr, the Nabi of Allah used to go and visit his wives. And every wife was passionate that the Nabi of Allah stays by me longer. So one day he went to Zainab Allah's house and when it was about time to leave, Zainab said, can I make some honey? The Nabi of Allah was too bashful to decline, so he had the honey. Zainab Allah took this as an advantage every day when it was time to leave, he said, can I make honey? Prolonging the stay of the Nabi at my house, shortening his stay at the respective spouses. The other wives with subtle rivalry, they said, no, 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 we've got to work this thing out. So Aisha and Hafsa planned. They said, tomorrow when the Nabi of Allah comes to you, you must just make this statement, whether it's true or not, and I'll say the same thing. You say, Akal ta maghafir. Oh, Nabi of Allah, I think Zainab is giving you maghafir. Now, maghafir was a type of a food that gave off a foul smell. And the Nabi of Allah was very particular about smell. So anyway, he went to Zainab, he had the honey, he came to Aisha. Aisha said, oh, Nabi of Allah, you had maghafir and came. Nabi Sassan said, no, what do you mean? She said, no, no, I'm getting the smell of maghafir. The Nabi of Allah refused, but after all, you know, the wife, they say, it doesn't matter how many times a married man changes his job, he still ends up with the same boss. <laughs> anyway, Aisha Rabi Allah said, Akalta Magafir, O Nabi of Allah, you had Magafir. Then he went to Hafsa, O Nabi of Allah, you had Magafir. He said, no, but I had honey. But the way you people are insisting, okay, I won't have honey again by Zainab, are you happy? But don't tell this to Zainab. Now I won't eat honey and I'll come away. He just made this to maintain joy. And, and, and happiness between his wives. Allah revealed the verse. Ya ayyuhan nabiyyu lima tuharrimu ma ahalla allahu lak. Tabataghi maradata azwajik. Wallahu ghafoorur rahim. O Nabi of Allah, what gives you the authority to make honey forbidden? When I have made it lawful just to maintain joy between your wives, break your qasam and tell them that, that honey has been made lawful for you just to bring joy to your wives who are the daughters of Abu Bakr and Umar. Immediately Quran came down and then Allah addressed the wives of Nabi alayhi salam in tatuba ilallah, repent to Allah, faqad sabat kulubukuma, otherwise your hearts are inclining to a different direction and remember if that remains your attitude, I will have my Nabi to divorce you. So brothers, cutting a long story short, Wallah, we have fit the description of kindness of the world. We haven't fit the description of kindness of Islam. That is to give deen to our wives. Wallah, if we will give deen to them, that is the best thing we can leave behind. The Nabi of Allah then gathers his wife. Every wife says, I want deen and I want akhirat and I want nothing else. As he is leaving this world, what were his last words? Asra kunna luhukam bi, atwalu kunna yadan. Oh my wife, I'm on my way. The one that wants to join me first in akhirat. In other words, wishes to pass away immediately so that he can be united with me. Is that wife of mine that will spend the most in the path of Allah. That's my last word to all of you, oh my wife. The one that will make charity a common practice. Allah will unite her with me first in Jannah. May Allah Ta'ala save our marriages from being broken. Wallah, divorces have become so common, so rife. It's the most despicable thing to witness and observe. May Allah give us the tawfiq that we display the noble akhlaq of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That both spouses, husband and wife respectively display that akhlaq which is desired in shariat. Wa akhiru da'wana alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Mm-hmm.